Welcome to Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off, flash fiction stories written by Josh Bush and narrated by Glenda Villamar. Enjoy! You have 1,440 minutes in a day. Use five of those minutes and visit freerice.com to play trivia games and help end world hunger. freerice.com If you would like to donate to help support the podcast, you can donate at coffee.com. That's ko-fi.com. And you can also buy our ebook anthology, compiling the stories from our first 10 episodes. You can find our book on lulu.com. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode 16, Because You Can Do a Thing. I tell you, that man likes me. You should see the way he looks at me, a bunch of times too," said Zilla. She was so excited that she was pacing and waving her arms animatedly. The two of them were in a large guard's shack at the edge of a compound in the middle of a Nevada desert. The compound was like a castle keep with a brick wall that surrounded 10 buildings. But what went on in those buildings? Zilla didn't know. Zilla's co-worker, Gianna, asked, I think I've seen him in the cafeteria. He's the lead scientist? I'm new, if you recall, and not good with faces. Is he the one with the glasses and the really long hair? Zilla clapped her hands. Yes, that's him, Montgomery. I wonder if he goes by Monty. Gianna smirked, or maybe Gummery. Gummery? Who would shorten Montgomery to Gummery? Gianna shrugged. Forget I said anything. So, have you talked to Mr. Lead Scientist Monty? Zilla jumped and exclaimed, Yes, we have. We were in the cafeteria, and I told him I couldn't stop thinking about him, and asked him if he felt the same way. He said, Of course. So I gave him my number. Gianna said, No way. When are you two getting married? I'm kidding. I don't know why I said that. Did he text you or call? Zilla sat down. He texted, and we texted off and on for two days, but then he told me he had a girlfriend. Bummer. Do you think he got to know you and he didn't like you, or that he really does have a girlfriend? Zilla pouted. Why would you say that? Of course he likes me. He totally has a girlfriend, but it doesn't matter because he likes me. The way he looked at me, and we were texting for two days. But yeah, after he told me he had a girlfriend, he stopped texting. But that didn't stop me. It was like, I couldn't. Gianna put her head in her hands. Oh, you didn't. Why? Zilla, undeterred, went on. A whole entire day went by, and I texted him that he should break up with his girlfriend and date me. A day went by, and he didn't respond. But I had this feeling, this intuition, that he was thinking about breaking up with his girlfriend, so I texted him some naughty selfies. But he didn't text back, and it's been three days and I haven't seen him in the cafeteria. It's starting to drive me nuts. Gianna fake coughed and muttered, I think you were already nuts. And by the way, this is the most boring job I've ever had, guarding a compound in the middle of nowhere. No one even shows up, ever. The boredom must be getting to you, because why else would you be harassing some poor scientist? Zilla glared at Gianna. I'm not harassing him. You know what? I'll text him and ask him if he thinks I'm harassing him. But before Zilla had a chance to get out her cell phone, a huge noise thundered from inside the compound. Zilla's eyes went wide. We better go check it out. Gianna said, Good idea. Finally, something to do. Maybe we'll get to use these old tiny revolvers they have us carry. Or, if we're really lucky, these ridiculous blowtorches they have us strapped to our backs. Zilla motioned for Gianna to get a move on and said, Be careful what you wish for. They ran out of the guard shack and into the compound. Zilla didn't see any carnage or signs of what could have caused the huge noise, but they kept jogging past buildings. Zilla didn't see anything. Then Zilla saw Montgomery. She came to a halt and gasped, It's Monty! Gianna said, You mean Gummery, you stalker. Behind Montgomery were eight other scientists and all of them looked rattled and frightened. Monty ran up to Zilla, and Zilla was so happy to see him that she forgot why she was there. 
Three days without seeing him had been torture. And here he was, finally. The other scientists ran past the two guards. Gianna screamed, What in the world is going on? Montgomery said back tersely, Nothing good, I'm afraid. We need to get out of here. And now. Zilla barely heard what her Monty was saying. Instead, she watched his face move as he spoke. She wanted to caress those cheekbones. Who cared about leaving this moment? Gianna put her hand on Zilla's shoulder. What is that? Zilla looked. She thought it looked like a shark running right at them, but it didn't make any sense. How could a shark be able to run? It had legs, and it walked upright. Zilla marveled that it had shorts on, a tank top, and a pair of running shoes. There were more sharks not so far behind it. Zilla said aloud, Am I dreaming? And then, this shark that could run was there. The shark opened its mouth of a thousand sharp teeth and clomped onto Montgomery. Blood shot everywhere as the shark reared its head and Montgomery was picked up in the shark's mouth. Zilla heard bones crunching. Gianna yanked out her revolver and shot the shark in the chest. The shark crumpled to its knees. Gianna shot again, hitting it in the chest again. The shark lay on its side, immobile. Zilla ran up to Montgomery, who was still in the shark's mouth, and all she could say was, Monty, no! Monty, no! As she could plainly see that he was very dead. Gianna grabbed Zilla and shook her. Come on! Move it, or you're next! Zilla bared her teeth and seethed, Not on my watch! And she pulled out the nozzle to her blowtorch. She brought it to bear, and as three sharks were almost on her, Zilla let loose a stream of fire. The fire that came out was horrendous. The fire that came out shot out to three feet to either side of her and six feet in front of her. Nothing could survive that onslaught, and Zilla was glad of it. Zilla let go of the on switch. The flames died out. She turned and started running to catch up with Gianna and the scientists. Zilla caught up to them and said to Gianna, I can't believe Monty is dead. He was going to marry me, and we were going to have three kids, but not anymore. Gianna yelled, Snap out of it, Zilla. There's more sharks coming. Zilla watched as the ground at her feet started getting hit with something small, like bees had gained the ability to go a million miles an hour and were smashing themselves into the ground. Gianna, sounding stupefied, The sharks have guns? Where did they get guns from? A skinny scientist with a white goatee and a white shock of hair said mournfully, From us, I'm afraid. Best run if you want to stay alive. Zilla wanted to stay alive, so she ran. They all ran. They ran around a building, but Zilla knew it was only a temporary reprieve from the danger. Zilla came to her senses. We need to get to the parking lot as fast as we can. Gianna agreed. Sounds good to me. They ran out of the compound. A few bullets zoomed by, and whenever Zilla turned back, she could see the ridiculous and terrifying sharks running in their direction. Zilla asked the goatee sporting scientist, Why did you guys make these creatures? What were you thinking? What had Monty been thinking? He was, or had been, the lead scientist. Goatee answered, Didn't you know? We're a home security company. We were trying to be on the cutting edge of home security. We wanted to develop what no one else could. Gianna groaned. Wanted to take a bite out of the competition, huh? They were out in the open now, and bullets grazed them. Two scientists were shot dead. Zilla and Gianna stopped running and fired off some revolver shots. Every time Zilla shot a shark, she thought, That's for Monty. That's for Monty. And then she ran out of bullets. She turned to go towards the parking lot, and Zilla's mouth fell open as the parking lot exploded. Goatee said, Drat! I forgot we had that bazooka! The good thing is that there was just the one round. They must be about out of bullets in those guns of theirs by now. I'm so glad my colleagues listened to my urging and didn't train the sharks to shoot weapons. Gianna bellowed, Now what? Hope they run out of bullets and we blowtorch them to death? What if we run out of fire? Zilla said, There's a helicopter, just on the other side of the canyon. Gianna wondered, And does anyone know how to fly a helicopter? 
Zilla thought. I bet Monty did, but said. How hard could it be? Seems pretty easy in arcade games. Gianna laughed. This is real life. This isn't Dave and Buster's. Are you sure this is real life? Because I don't know if you've noticed, but we're being chased by running sharks. They ran, and as they got to the top of the canyon, Goatee said, Ah, good. They're all out of bullets, it seems. I'm glad we genetically engineered these sharks with short legs. Gianna whooped. It's going to work. If we get that helicopter started, we're going to get out of here alive. They ran towards the orange helicopter. Zilla looked at it, and she thought it'd be easy to fit all of them inside it. Zilla sighed. Why had Monty made these abominations? Just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing. If Monty had made these things, then maybe she'd been all wrong about him. He probably hadn't been Mr. Right after all. But that didn't mean he deserved to die like he did. They arrived at the helicopter, and Zilla jumped into the pilot's seat. Gianna was next to her, and she had her phone out and was googling how to start a helicopter. She started flipping switches. Zilla could see seven or so sharks running down the hill. They were closing in fast. The helicopter blades came to life, and it got windy and crazy loud as the blades spun around and around. Zilla looked back at the scientists and at the open doors. Shame the doors couldn't close. Who thought of designing a helicopter like this? Hold on to something. We're going up. Zilla pulled back on the joystick, and the helicopter rose up into the air. But the joystick sure was touchy. With the slightest jostling of the joystick, the helicopter careened in that direction. Zilla tried her hardest to barely move the joystick at all. Zilla looked over at Gianna, who had a huge goofy grin on her face. Gianna hugged Zilla, and the helicopter leaned sickeningly way to the left. So Gianna let go, apologizing. Sorry, as Zilla righted the helicopter. Zilla couldn't believe she was flying a helicopter. And wouldn't you know, all that money spent at Dave and Buster's really had paid off. But she didn't dare get too high in the sky. She didn't want to think about how she'd get down from a high altitude. That's when Zilla realized that she'd eventually have to land. How was she ever supposed to do that? Zilla saw something in the sky. Wait. It was a group of something, but she couldn't tell what they were, and they were coming towards them. Gianna yelled, They're not big enough to be sharks! Goatee was in between them. He yelled, Not sharks! Something else! They're sea otters driving drones! We trained them to be good pilots, and also, they were bred to be vicious. Yeah. Zilla thought she'd definitely been wrong about Monty. What kind of monster would mess with the genes of a cute little sea otter to become an attack animal for a home security company? To think she'd texted Monty pictures of herself. The otters were good at flying those drones. They flew right into the open doors of the helicopter. The cutest little sea otters in the world jumped in and started biting scientists. Zilla felt helpless having to fly the helicopter but she watched as Gianna had found a bag of golf clubs, and Gianna was smacking sea otters right out the doorway and into the sky. Gianna kept yelling, Four! The scientists with their bare hands were doing their best to fend off the cute furry nightmares as well. Goatee, who'd been carrying a cane, had unsheathed it and was using the sword inside it, like a medieval warrior. And in just a few minutes, all the otters were forced out of the helicopter, and everyone in the helicopter was safe. Zilla saw a gas station and flew near it. Zilla motioned the thumbs down sign to Gianna, and Gianna got out her phone to figure out how to land the helicopter. Zilla got close to the ground and Gianna flicked some switches. The helicopter came to a landing and the blades of the helicopter turned off and Zilla could hear again. It had been so loud. Zilla crawled out of the helicopter and she was giddy to be alive. She'd have to find a new job, because there was no way she was going back there ever again. But she didn't care, because against all the odds, she was alive. A man walked over from the gas station. Zilla thought he looked bewildered and amused, and Zilla thought he also looked handsome. Gianna came up to her and whispered in Zilla's ear, He can't stop looking at you. She paused. Do me a favor. If you two hit it off, don't text this one, okay? Just go on a date like a normal person. Zilla answered back, 
good idea. Let's just hope he doesn't like sharks. The end. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We look forward to bringing you the next episode in Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off.